Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about Has my ex already grieved me? This is a big question. It's a scary thing to think mm -hmm. about. You know, if you've been following our channel for a while, you often hear us talk about grief. And particularly Margaret would always talk about it because it was an area that she had a lot of insight and information. She was great. But, you know, a lot of times your ex has been thinking about the breakup before doing it. Mm -hmm. In other words, yes, sometimes people just get into a fight and they're like, I can't take this anymore. And they end a relationship. But a lot of times people have been thinking about it. There are things that are making them unhappy. And so when you go back and think about that, you're probably asking yourself, well, if that's the case, did they already grieve me? Did they already get that out of their system before they ended things? And if they've already done that, does that mean they won't revisit getting back with me at some point? Mm -hmm. I think it's a really big question and it's something that many of you are probably asking yourselves even now. And so I, I wanna start out with the differences between anticipatory grief and experiencing the grief in real time and experiencing the loss as it's happening. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So this anticipatory grief is really a term used for those who um, are basically waiting for a loss to happen. This can happen if you have a family member who's termina terminally ill, uh, that you're just in this stage of waiting, that you know it's gonna happen and it's killing you inside to know that someday you are going to be separated from somebody that you love and care about and you're just waiting this impending doom. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. My mom had cancer and was terminally ill for a while. And it was hard to watch her go through it because mm -hmm. we knew there, I mean, I knew there wasn't anything that was gonna happen to turn it around because of the cancer that she had and how aggressive it was. And so it was hard. It is tough when you know it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And then when the moment actually happens, nothing can prepare you for it still. You know, you could be knowing about this moment for months in advance, even years sometimes, but when it actually happens in real time, you can't even think about what that feeling could be like. And so we decided to start out this video by talking about that because the same goes for relationships and breakups and separations. So your ex might be preparing for a breakup mm -hmm. months before. They might be thinking, okay, I'm ready to let this go. I'm making my decision. I'm finally going to do it. The moment that it happens and they are separated from you, when those routines are now interrupted, you know, now they no longer get good morning texts from you. Mm -hmm. Now they no longer go to you when they need something or vice versa. You know, they're not there to support you. Then maybe they stop saying I love you or they say it less and less. Mm -hmm. Those rituals get disrupted and it's totally different to experience it than it is to think about it. Mm -hmm. And just in general, humans are pretty bad at predicting what experiences will be like, what new experiences will be like. There was actually a piece of research that I read not too long ago that talked about humans tend to predict the future in ways that will um, benefit them mm -hmm. rather than in just neutral ways mm -hmm. or ways that which are would explain Which would explain bank robbers, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. We're gonna get away with this and it's gonna be great. Big bag of money. <laughs> gonna have the money bag, the money sign right on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know most of you are thinking, well, does that mean that I'm hoping for a future with my ex that may or may not happen, mm -hmm. possibly. But it also means that for your ex who did decide to go through this breakup, they're thinking, my life is gonna be fantastic after this, I'm finally gonna be free, I'm you know, not gonna feel any of this loss or pain or negative feelings, mm -hmm. it's just gonna be hunky-dory from there on out. And then once reality hits, it's much different. That's a great point. Um, because yeah, then they have to feel it. And what they think they're gonna go through is often what they do go through. Right. And so, you know, in the beginning, they're excited. Mm -hmm. They feel relieved. They did what they needed to do. Now they're going to stick to their decision. They are like, oh, okay, it wasn't working. I wasn't happy. Maybe you weren't meeting their needs. I mean, there's so many reasons people break up, but a lot of times they just feel this relief, this separation elation that we talk about. Mm -hmm. And it really hurts to think about your partner being elated not to be with you mm. but it's just what a lot of people go through not everybody 
but a lot of people. So you're confused and you're sitting there thinking like, well, what what's happening with them? Like they seem so happy and, and they're, they're not sad about this breakup at all. I, I, you want them to be devastated too. Mm -hmm. Breakups wouldn't be as painful if you thought the other person was just as devastated, right? right? You'd be like, good, you're devastated too. <laughs> We're going through this together. But when you see that they look happy on social media, you're like, well, aren't they sad? Why aren't they grieving this? Mm -hmm. But it's just that they had to make a very difficult decision. And when they g went through with it, you know, and even though it had been ruminating in their mind, now there's just some relief that comes with making that decision. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the reality is, is that grief takes some time to really set in and that grief is not predictable and it's not consistent. So there may be some days that are better than others. Mm -hmm. There may be some days where you're feeling totally normal, totally fine, and the next day it hits you. Yeah. And we also want to remind you that we don't all live in a bubble. There are things outside of us that can prevent us from feeling grief. Distractions, maybe something is happening at work that needs all of our attention and we just don't have the emotional capacity to process our breakup. So there's lots of things that can be happening in the periphery that aren't allowing your ex to grieve right at this very moment. Yep. You know, one thing that you'll see a lot of time is that when people are going through a hard time in life, not just breakups, but you know, you have a family member that's terminally ill or stressed out or whatever, that they do act outs. They do things to distract them from the grief. They get into a bar fight. What? Why? Well, mm -hmm. because it distracts them from what they're feeling, the pain, the hurt, the sadness, and it feels good to get into the adrenaline, the fight, they get into a fight, they got some of their aggression out, mm -hmm. and they feel this relief afterwards. Margaret used to talk about that in the prisons with the mm -hmm. people that she would work with. They would get into a fight, and then afterwards everybody would feel calm and relaxed <laughs> afterwards. She would tell me about fights that would happen at funerals, <laughs> and she would say because it's much more easy and socially acceptable for some people, for men in particular, to feel angry than it is to feel sad. Yeah. Unless she had an excellent point with that. It's true. But just to put you at ease, in all likelihood, your ex has not grieved you or the breakup or your relationship ending. And very few people, sadly, are responsible and proactively getting help for their issues after a breakup. Mm -hmm. They want to, you know, find this new person or fantasize about this new thing or I'm going to move to another state and I'm going to do this thing thinking that those things will solve their problems. But you may have heard the, the phrase, wherever you go, there you are. Mm -hmm. It's true. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. some people I see, oh, I'm going to go to another state and I have this fantasy about moving with these friends to another state yeah. and it's going to make me feel so much better. The geographical cure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, there's a high probability that your ex is going to have to think about your relationship it ending, why it didn't work out, process it, and think about if it's really the best decision for them to move on. Mm -hmm. You know? And we also like to think about the meaning of things. We get philosophical sometimes. <laughs> and so what would be the meaning if your ex did grieve you? You know, I know that on this channel we do talk a lot about how the grieving process can help an ex reconsider things and get to the point where they miss you and they want to reconnect and they want to try to work things out again. But sometimes exes do grieve you. Sometimes they do move on and are still open to making things work. We hear many situations where even years later exes mm -hmm. come back and want to rekindle things. And so, sure, maybe the most typical way that we say things play out is that an ex does get to a point where they miss the partner, miss those love rituals that they had and, and wants to work things out. But sometimes that's not the case and that's okay too. You know, and, and the same might happen for you as well. You might get to a point where you have grieved your ex, where you think, okay, that was a really meaningful relationship to my life. It gave me a lot of purpose. You know, I felt like I was a really great partner to them. We felt really connected. We had a future that we were going to build together. And now that's not here anymore, but I can move on mm -hmm. and still get to that place where you're thinking, well, what did my ex bring to the table? Were they a, a good lifelong partner for me? Yeah. At some point, if the opportunity becomes available again, you could still be open to it. 
So the, what I'm trying to say here is that what's most important is that you do continue to work on yourself and those things that make you a valuable partner. Because whether or not they have grieved this relationship sure is important, but it's also important that you're their best option no matter what. That's right. You always want to focus on the personal growth and being somebody's best option because when you do, you're not really going to have much competition because what percentage of the world do you think really works through their attachment issues and gets to a great place where they're confident, secure, attentive, emotionally attuned partner that brings a lot to the table? Mm -hmm. Not many. So when you focus on that, that is truly the, the position of strength for you because you can't control what they're going to do, but you can control what you do. And those of you that are dedicated to the personal growth and do the workbooks 30 minutes a day or the course 30 minutes a day, you're going to grow and grow and grow and you're going to see more and more clearly through the growth, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the more you have these aha moments, the more you realize, oh, this is what I can do better or this is where I struggled or this is what I did do good and they didn't do well. And you can become a version of yourself that your ex would be blown away by, right? And realize that your ex has to kind of think about who you were, but they're not going to be prepared for who you are and this person that they could miss out on if you stay committed to the growth. Exactly. So you can grieve a person, you can grieve a relationship, but who you're becoming can be totally different from that. That's right. So stay motivated. Don't just do the work to get your ex back. You do it for yourself and do it to have a healthy relationship with yourself and your partners. Because even if your ex doesn't come back, you're going to meet somebody that you're crazy about and you want to be ready for it. Because I just did a call last week with a guy who had a breakup a couple of years ago got with somebody great, said to me right up front, I didn't do the work, and now he's in another breakup. Mm. So you don't want that to be you, okay? So stay motivated and keep doing the work. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you're ready to talk. So just click on her name on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.